Hi everyone. So in this video I'm going to talk about the basics of operation of the little bit mining log. I'm going to go through the menus, options and different windows you can enable and tell you a little bit of how this whole thing works. So let's start with the main window of the program. You can see here you have some file menu options, a little bit of help with about page, some buttons here to mark your drops. Uh, like uh, they're used for manual control. Here are some menus you can use. There's some text that will display different things to you and claim counters, position, planet, things like that. So maybe let's start off with um, the basic windows. Here you have the map window, the first icon. Basically it displays uh, the map of Calypso. If you press P in game to mark your position, and you have chat log enabled, it will center the position of the window on you. Um, the second window is uh, filters menu, which enables you to uh, control the content that is displayed on the map, either by the type of resource, the sizes, uh, dates, depth, coordinate ranges, um, it can display your runs and drops and you can filter that out and some additional features that we'll talk about later. Here on the top you can change the planet if you want to see uh, different planets or different places you've been to and you're not currently on you can manually select them here. Um, but we are on uh, Calypso and always when you press P in game you will be taken back to your current location. The next icon opens up a tool menu and you want to use this to enter the information of your finder. I here have a rookie Terra Master from Arcadia. I use it because it's unlimited and I don't like to buy a new one every few drops. So this is uh, quite good for me for testing purposes. Here you can see the range on different uh, drops. You can see here is the 54 meters for ore and matter and treasure. That's why I enter 54.00 here. The costs are related to your decay and the cost of the probes you drop. Right now I don't think this is set accurately for my tool. It's, uh, I think this is a default for the TT tool that you use. You would want to find out the values uh, of your DK of your Terra Master or your uh, Finder. But basically, if it uses um, probes, for example, you can see that here we have some probes. We'll split them into, for example, one. And one probe is valued at 5 pets. So if we account for decay, then maybe this will be 5.5 or something pets. Actually, for n matter, this will be 5 pets. But for R, because it uses 2, then it will be 10 pet plus decay. And for treasure, it uses 3 probes per drop, so it will be 15 pet plus some decay. You have to check uh, some sites that list the exact DK for the tools to know the exact value but this is used for tracking your uh, runs, your income or the expenses you make. So you might want to make this precise. Okay, the next window we're going to go into is the runs window. Basically when you start mining this will fill up with the amount of drops you made for ores and matters and treasures, the hit ratios for each, the cost you made, I mean the cost, the amount of pet you spent on your run, basically it will add up the drop cost values here of the drops you make, so that's why this is useful. And when you end your run you can stop it and just log it for later use. Then we have a statistics window which basically can show you currently the average depth you find things at. If that is interesting to you it will do it over 30 last 30 days. Um, um, the app it will show an average and uh, all time average if you're interested in at what depth you find your resources. 
and we also have a store window where you can purchase additional features for minor points which you will receive for logging your claims or making donations to the mining club. Uh, enough about that. Also we have uh, a file menu where you can import and export your claims, basic settings window and you can, where you can configure the tool more. Uh, you can log out and exit the program from there too. Uh, basically in the settings you have different options and one important is the auto option. Okay, In the auto menu you can determine how the tool behaves because uh, you can operate the mining log in three ways. You can either do it manually by pressing these buttons and I will demonstrate it now. Let's say we are using our Terra Master and we want to make a drop okay so we want to drop for ore only then we'll press this button and the map here will mark our drop if you will also drop end matter you can also press a second button and you can see these colored rings are 54 meters of radius and they mark exactly on the spot we are standing that we have dropped something also we have one for treasure we can undo them by pressing a confirmation and also you can scan a claim and mark it as depleted by using these buttons if you find something. Uh, that's one way of approaching it. The second way is to have keybinds which you can set in the settings menu. You can set keybinds and you can assign hotkeys to these buttons. F11 to drop it, uh, drop for example for ore that will mark it on the map. F12 for end matter. I have F10 for undo. So basically, by pressing keys on the keyboard, it's much faster than going here and pressing the buttons in the program. One key issue to know is that keybinds basically will hook to your keyboard and record all the keys you press. If you don't like the idea of the mining log, uh, reading your keystrokes of your keyboard when it's enabled, you can disable this in the config file or by a uh, command line when you run the, when the, run the program, there's a parameter you can set, no keybinds. And it's all on the website if you want more information, all right? If you're paranoid about this. The third way, and I think the best way to use the mining log if your computer has enough resources, is the automatic uh, automatic uh, detection of stuff. So, for example, here we have the ra radar, and here we have the, the window for the uh, finder, and the little big mining log can grab a screenshot of your game and can read this information: the location here and the data that is on the finder here and also scan a claim deed. So if you mark this on, then you can uh, enable these features. Of course, this will require some CPU time for processing, but if you want it to run automatically, then it's the best way. For a little demonstration, if uh, I'm going to uh, run a little bit around and show you how the mining log reads of the radar. So my avatar is starting to run and by doing absolutely nothing except for running you can see that the position on the map changes. If we want to have the map auto follow my position I'll just run the other way and you can see the map is moving together with the pointer of my avatar on the map. Right here we can zoom in and out with the scroll wheel and Basically, that's automatic detection of the radar. But the radar has to be exactly a certain size for this to work. You can press this button to sample the radar. This will show you a part of an image from the uh, game window. You can move your radar window right up here. Position it to the edge, very edge. And just make sure the size here when you uh, resize this, matches. Okay, so here's the advised way to get your radar size correct. 
first what you want to do is position it so that it's right on the edges of this window frame here. It's good to have something bright as a background, for example the sky or the moon, so that you can see these edges nicely. And you just want to position it so that here and here they're basically touching the edge of the window. Next what you want to do is minimize the radar and this is quite important because if you start from the maximized one there's something weird going on with the texture size. Uh, so minimize it all right, all the way dragging to the left and then you want to drag it out so that it matches the size of this window. All right. And once that happens, you can see this bar turning green. That means that your radar size is correct and it should work in any position you put it on the screen. Then you can stop sampling the radar. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is detection of the drops. For that, you want to have your finder window on top so it's clearly visible. If you look on your map, you can see these values here for radar, for scanner, for deed. These are uh, reading percentages. If they are read correctly, they should show up as 100. If I hide my finder, then you can see this value dropping. If I pick it out again, and this window is clearly visible, it will go up. If I hide it to the side, it will go down. That means that the, the program is not able to recognize it. So with this out and visible, you can basically just make a drop. So let's try that. I'm going to drop some probes. There you go. Without pressing any buttons, the program marks this on the map by reading the changing text in this window. So we can run out of this drop radius, find a new spot, and try to drop again. And this is the basic thing you will be doing when using the mining block. Making a drop, moving out of the already search radius, make another drop, try to find some resources. All right? So now that we're away from that position, we'll make another drop. And again, it's automatically detected without me having to press any buttons. And I'll just speed this up until I find something. All right, and we hit the claim, actually two. So now we can open our inventory and scan these deeds. Now, if this is uh, unchecked, the tool will not scan them automatically. So I can open the deed, and you can see the information here. It shows up as unknown. This one, it shows us force nexus. If I press a button, okay, this should be scanned automatically. I can either press this button or I can press a hotkey. The tool will give you a message telling you what size and type of ore it has scanned and will place a marker on the map and shrink the search radius down to this point because the theory goes that you will, your search drop your drop will search up to the point where it finds something so there might be more resources out there. Now let's turn on the automatic detection and me without pressing any button I'm just going to open the other deed and the tool automatically scans the unknown. So we can go extract them now. This is the force nexus and I'll just get my extractor It has been depleted automatically, the timer is gone based on the message in the chat log. And now I'm going to extract the second claim. I can see it's a Listerium stone size 26. If I right click on the map, I can say Listerium and size 2 because it was 26 back. And there you have it. This is the basics of operation, automated manual and a quick walkthrough for all the menus. 
Uh, here you can enable, disable the voice uh, messages that the tool will speak to you with uh, uh, with some uh, information from the uh, log. For example, if you find an order, it will tell you what size it is, so you don't have to pay attention and just you know what you found. Uh, here you can generate an automatic signature in the keybinds to set your keybinds. Here you can set up some screenshot options, error suppression, automatic updates, and stuff like that. I hope you find this informative, and uh, I hope I'll see you again. Take care. Bye.